Hello everyone. So in the spirit of the last video where I created geometry using Swift Block, a Blender add-on, uh, we're going to extend this to Snappy Hex Mesh with another Blender add-on called Snappy Hex Mesh GUI. So we're going to find this real quick, give that a Google search or DuckDuckGo. We're going to go to this Git repository. Same sort of deal as last time. We're going to download this zip file and then open it up in Blender. So you'd go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ins, and then you'd install, go to Downloads, and there it is. So you'd load that. I already have mine loaded in. And to confirm that it is enabled, you have to see this check mark here. I'd recommend restarting Blender afterwards just to make sure nothing funky is going on. All right, so I'm going to delete all of these and get our scene ready for uh, geometry preparation. So. I found a Tesla valve online on uh, like stlbase.com or something like that and I already scaled it to be um, more open foam friendly so uh, where is this desktop so I already have this STL so right here so it's how big is this it is just about a meter long I think the original model was like 95 meters long for some reason so um, that's not really usable for open foam. So if we notice here, if I zoom in too much, it'll start clipping, so we don't want that. Um, so I have to change those settings. So clip uh, view, clip start. So we're gonna make this like a micron or something. All right, yeah, so now I can work with that. So we go into x-ray mode we can see that the the tesla valve geometry is there it'll force flow to go in the direction where that arrow is where's the arrow the arrow points that way so flow will only go in that direction to prepare this geometry we're gonna have to add patches we're gonna have to cover these holes here for the inlet and the outlet so i'll show you how i do that we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab and then we can select this ring of nodes right here. I'm going to hold control to select multiple of these at a time. Hypothetically, you should be able to press alt and select a ring of nodes, but that wasn't working for me. So now that we've gotten everything selected, we're going to press F and that automatically creates a face on it. If you press P and then enter, that creates uh, sort of a selection you can name your patch so this will be our uh, outlet so F2 outlet if we scroll over to the other side or rotate to the other side get a good angle on that make sure we don't get any other nodes we don't want yeah alt doesn't work so I'm just gonna hold control and select all these nodes. Press F once again, press P once again, and then call this patch inlet. So now if we click on outlet, we see that those nodes are highlighted, or that ring is a highlighted, and if we press inlet, we see that that's highlighted. Wonderful. So the remaining geometry would then be walls, so I will name this wall. Oops, I must have pressed something that shouldn't have pressed. Wall. Okay. Anything else? I believe not. So once we're ready to actually mesh this, you'll go back into object mode and then click on snappy hex mesh GUI, which should be right here. I believe if you press, what is it, like, not control, and is it just N? Yeah, if you press N, then this little uh, sidebar will show up, and you'll get all these options for, uh, some of these will look familiar, um, number of CPUs, um, like surface refinement, volume refinement, location and mesh. Um, you can also generate a block mesh from here, so this makes it 
quite useful, honestly. It sort of just is a better version of Swift Block, in my opinion. So what do we want to do with this? So this is like about a meter long. Uh, so a 0.1 meter cell length is not going to do it for us. So we'll make that like a centimeter. And this is applied to each of the objects you have in here, each of the patches you've defined. So you can see that here. Um, we're, since we're on wall, we want to change the type of this to a wall. I'm going to bump up the surface refinement from 0 to min of 1 and max of 2. I've sort of done this already, so I know it sort of makes a better uh, mesh. And volume refinement, I'm going to make a level of 3 on the inside. And what else do we have? So we've got that all set. Wall. Uh, location. So it'll automatically put location and mesh at 0, 0, 0, I believe. So I'm pretty sure that's inside. Actually, I'm just going to delete that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess with it. I know it worked before. So, if you had a more complex geometry that you were unsure if the default setting would work for it, then you can, of course, put in a uh, location and mesh object in there. So we're going to take a look at the outlet and inlet. It's a patch. Uh, it's literally just a flat plane, so I don't think it requires any refinement at all. Same goes for the inlet. The only thing I'm going to do is bump up my CPUs to 6 because why not? And we've got to save this to a Blender file. So I'm just going to overwrite that and I'm going to export. If we open up the terminal, cd into desktop and that's my directory Tesla valve. Well. I already did this before, as I said, so I've got two blend files. But if I do block mesh or capital M and surface features and then run, uh, I'm going to have to do decompose parallel. I believe a decompose par dict has been written. Let's make sure. Decompose par dict. If we cd and or if we can just nano system decompose par dict. Yep, we got six. So that's all set. If we run decompose par uh, cop. So if you wanted to do an actual run, you'd have a zero directory, and you'd want to use the copy zero function or flag. Or option I forget what these are these shell command things are but you want that to be copied into each of your processor directories so that you can run a solver on it but in this case we're just going to use uh, snappy hex mesh so now that this has been done we'll use MPI run six processors and snappy hex mesh dash parallel dash overwrite and there it goes this may take a while so I'll cut until or I'll cut once it's finished all right now it's finished so we're gonna touch Tesla dot foam and pair view Tesla dot foam parafoam seems to not work with uh, getting this case type to be decomposed. So we'll do that and look at this. Beautiful. So we can see a little bit of sort of jaggedies on here and that's just a matter of you optimizing your settings for the mesh that you want. If we do a clip down the z-axis we can take a look uh, how the mesh is on the inside and yeah this certainly could be refined further. Um, especially where like these corners are certainly could be more refined locally um, sort of like how it is 
like right there. But for a first run, we can s clearly see that the geometry is extracted and it's basically ready to be used for a simulation, uh, at least once the mesh is refined. So let's take a look at how we could make this better. So we could probably make the block mesh finer. I think that would probably be the... Uh, um, what, what did I do here? Uh, I shouldn't have done that. I said one centimeter. So maybe we want a volume refinement of four. I think what I did previously was make the block mesh more fine, but perhaps this would be better. Also, to make things faster for you, don't type in block mesh, blah, 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 surface features. Um, I made a mesh file. Sorry, my dogs are freaking out. But you can do this instead. You can write a bash file and just type the commands that you'd type anyways. So, control X. Um, actually, just in case this causes any issues, I'm going to get rid of this copy zero command. And I have to change that MP12 to MP6. I'm, I'm just not sure since I don't have that zero folder anymore. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't have a zero folder. So um, I'm going to rm-r all the procs, all the processor directories, and let's run mesh again. So this certainly will take longer. And I'll cut to when it's finished. Okay, so now that's finished, we're going to once again open up ParaView, console.home, <clears throat> go to Decompose, and once again, take a look at the mesh. Uh, let's see. So a little bit of stuff on the surface, and that can be remedied by introducing more surface refinement, but less so than the previous case. So we'll once again do a clip down the z-axis or z-normal and surface of edges. Oh yeah, beautiful. Oh, that looked really weird when, yeah, that showed up, but that little thing in the center, but ignore that. <sighs> get Let's get rid of this plane. That looks a lot better, um, a lot more uniform. There's some of these weird elements in the center here, but for the most part, it's more uniform. Uh, it's refined in these more uh, smaller places where those larger elements wouldn't be suitable. Personally, I think making the block mesh more fine would help this, so I guess I'll make that my last sort of thing to check. What's nice about this is you don't have to delete any files when you uh, make changes, it'll just overwrite the files that were already created. So, where is cell length? So, we'll make this point zero oh oh five five millimeters, uh, and we'll, we'll reduce this to three and increase this to a minimum of two, or all surfaces will be refined at a level of two because I don't think that's too expensive. So we'll export and remove our processor directories and then mesh once again. And I'll be back once it's done. Okay, now that it's finished, we'll do this again to take a look at the mesh. I'll just skip straight to the clip down the center that the surface of edges and uh, I'd say it's similar results to the previous one although uh, if we get rid of the surface of edges there's no sort of jaggies on the outside because I specified a surface or I guess towards the end there we see a little bit but um, along the periodic sort of curves here that are repeating. There's not really really bad surface mesh right there, but if we look at how long it took, 
it was 217 seconds if you remember from the previous one it was like what uh, well let me go back that far but i believe it was into the 300s so you can get a similar mesh by just making your block mesh more fine rather than letting snappy uh refine the uh the existing block mesh so that's something that maybe you can use in your projects so i hope this was helpful um i suppose the extension to this would be running a full case from this geometry and i'll consider making that video if you guys want me to do so uh, let me know in the comments rate this video and subscribe if you want to see more open foam related content see y'all